Over the years, we've seen a range of different smartphone companies announce and launch what they consider to be innovative and truly different smartphones. But when Samsung announced to the world their folding smartphone, it took the world by storm. This year, we get the successor to that, which is this, the Z Fold 2 5G. And I've been using this practically since launch. So in this review, I wanna give you a detailed long-term look at this smartphone. Talk about the good, the bad, and ultimately answer the question, is it innovative and different? Here on MQAN Reviews. So do you remember the original Fold and when Samsung announced it? Because I certainly do. It was the first time in many years when I noticed tech reviewers, media, and even the general public being truly excited about a new genre of smartphone. Because up until that point, and in many respects, even today, a lot of smartphones have stagnated. They look the same, they function pretty much the same. So there hasn't been any major changes in smartphones. But when Samsung took the risk of announcing the original Fold, they really pushed the boat out. The concept was simple. You have a smartphone that opens out into a larger device. And in many respects, the original Fold is very similar to the Z Fold 2 5G. That concept still remains the same, but there are some major differences between them. You'll notice that from a styling design perspective, they look, outwardly at least, very, very similar. There are some fundamental changes. To begin with, the thickness between the two of them, there is a noticeable difference in thickness. You'll also notice that there is a slight width increase uh, between the two of them. So the Z Fold 2 is actually wider particularly in the hand than the original Fold. What I also notice between the two of them is that the Z Fold 2 feels slightly heavier, but it feels much more solid, that's the best way of describing it, than the original Fold. The original Fold, even today, still feels slightly clunky. Now, the original Galaxy Fold had a main display, a 7.3 inch Infinity Flex, dynamic AMOLED and it had a cover display that was 4.6 inch super AMOLED. Now I remember being critical of that cover display because it didn't feel quite practical day to day. I actually ended up using it more as a notification display and when I wanted to use the device found myself opening it more than I wanted to. However on the new Z Fold 2 you've got a main display which is a 7.6 inch Infinity O. It is actually a QXJ Plus dynamic AMOLED up to 120 hertz and the cover display is a 6.2 inch Super AMOLED display with 60 Hertz. Now, it is such a major difference because the cover display is the display that feels like a fully fledged smartphone and the main display feels like a mini tablet. There is such a big difference between the current Z Fold 2 and the original Fold for the better. Now, talking of that display, that 7.6 inch main display, is a truly breathtaking. It is absolutely stunning. Everything from consuming media, like watching YouTube videos, to you know browsing through images or videos that you've taken with this device, all the way through to gaming at 120 hertz is absolutely stunning. The vibrancy, the accuracy, the punchiness of that display is truly something that you can't show off on video. It's something that you have to feel and try out for yourself to really, really appreciate. Now, by default, that display is set up to 60 hertz to conserve on the battery life. If you want to take full you know, capabilities of that display, then take it all the way up to adaptive 120 hertz. That's really where you're going to get the maximum refresh of that display and it's going to be totally, totally worth it. Now, related to that display is going to be the obvious question, is there a crease? There certainly is a crease on the Z Fold 2. It isn't as pronounced as the original Fold. That's certainly something that I noticed side by side. Look, it's one of those things that is just unfortunate because it's there on this style of folding smartphones. But you know, when you start using it day to day, you certainly notice it a lot less. And you know, I haven't noticed it impeding any of the media or anything else that I'm watching. In fact, I think the rest of the display actually makes up for that. Now on the front, you get that cover display. This is that 6.2 inch HD Plus Super AMOLED display. It's actually made out of Gorilla Glass Victus on the front screen, so it's quite durable. The front display maxes out at 60 Hertz. Now one of the other major updates has come in the form of that hinge system. 
Samsung learned from the original Fold issues and they've gone to improving that. So now we get a certain coating to the internal components that prevent uh, corrosion. We also get a sweeper system as well that prevents microparticles from getting under the display. The overall hinge feels more solid and you'll notice that when you're opening and closing it day to day and you'll also notice it when it's completely opened out because it feels much more flush with that display and just sturdy all round. Now there's also an advantage to the changes that they've done with that hinge system in the sense that now you get this free stand uh, at different angles and that's what uh, Samsung are calling the flex mode. There are some major advantages to that. I'm going to talk about that in the UI element of this video, but that really is something that overall feels as an improvement, a major improvement from the original Fold. Now, as far as internals are concerned, this is powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 Plus. This is a solid chipset, and it's really good to see that Samsung have decided not to kind of divide the Z Fold 2 into Sinus versus Snapdragon models. Uh, the Snapdragon processor on this is absolutely solid. And when you combine it with 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of internal storage, you're gonna get more than enough in terms of performance from this device. I have been using this since its launch. I've not noticed any issues whatsoever when it comes to lag, performance issues, multitasking, gaming, you know, everything that you would expect to use from a smartphone of this style and design functionality, really no issues when it comes to performance. So I think most users will be more than happy in that respect. So as far as software is concerned, this is powered by Android 10 and it has Samsung's own skin on top of that, which is One UI, version 2.5 to be specific. Now, I've spoken about One UI in the past. I wasn't always a fan, but over the last couple of years, Samsung have certainly refined, you know, improved and simplified the user interface. And I'm finding myself enjoying it more and more. A couple of these really stand out for me. The first is with that larger display, you get really intuitive multitasking. So you can essentially open up to three different windows with controls over the layout. It makes using multitasking on that larger display much more enjoyable and overall intuitive. So one of the other features in the UI that I'm a big, big fan of is something called app continuity. We saw this with the original Samsung Galaxy Fold, but with this, it works just as well. It's great to start apps off on the cover screen and then simply opening the Z Fold 2 up will continue the app, but on the main screen, the larger screen. And this is great for media. And you know, I find this very, very useful. So in flex mode, you get optimized user interface within certain core apps, but also third party apps. And this is simple things like, for example, when you have it opened at a particular angle, you're able to view media, but also have access to controls. It just makes it much more intuitive to use. The other app where this really does become very, very useful is in the camera app itself. So this is capture view mode where you'll be able to see the viewfinder and also access to the galleries, but also access to the controls as well. It makes it so much more easy and it means that you don't have to fiddle around within the user interface to get what you're looking for. It just makes it much more intuitive and much more practical day to day. So as far as cameras are concerned, you get a fair few on this device. To begin with, on the back, you get a triple camera setup made up of a 12 megapixel main F. 1.8 with OIS, you get a 12 megapixel f2.4 for the telephoto, OIS with that and two times optical zoom, and then 12 megapixel f2.2 for the ultra wide. Now, as far as the camera is concerned, you get really good shots throughout. I was pleasantly surprised. It doesn't have the zoom, like 50x zoom, like the Note 20 Ultra, or even higher as the S20 Ultra. It does max out at 10x, but it does produce some very good images. Everything from ultra wide to that max maximum zoom will give you overall good image quality. The color, the accuracy, I'm pretty happy with the quality. Now on the front, you get a single camera, which is a 10 megapixel f2.2, and that's the same for once you have the device fully opened out, that main display will also have the same camera. It's a 10 megapixel f2.2 there as well. Now, as far as video is concerned, video is pretty decent here. You'll be able to record 4K at 60 frames per second. And on those 10 megapixel front and cover uh, cameras, you'll be able to record 4K at 30 frames per second. Here are a couple of examples of video taken.
So one of my favorite features on most of the Galaxy devices is live focus video and on the Z Fold 2 5G I think it works pretty well with that front facing camera. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think. Now as far as battery is concerned, the Z Fold 2 has a 4500mAh battery. It supports wired, fast charging, 25 watt wireless and wireless power share as well. The battery size on this is slightly larger from the original Fold and for the most part I think the battery life is pretty decent. There are noticeable differences in battery life when you're consuming you know, a lot of media which you will do on that larger display, playing more games and obviously that refresh rate as well. So if you want to conserve on the battery life just be aware of that but for the most part I think it's done well in the battery department. So finally we get to that all important question about pricing. So here's the thing, this is one of those smartphones that I will regularly take out with me and almost always if I'm seen using this I get people asking me what I have in my hand and if it's any good. The follow-up question to that is almost always is it worth the asking price? So what is the asking price? Well currently in the market here in the UAE at least it retails for about 7,599 dirhams that equates to about 1,700 pounds just over the 2,000 plus dollar mark. That's a lot of smartphone money. It's not really a smartphone that I could recommend to everybody out there but it is certainly a smartphone that as I mentioned in the introduction ticks those two boxes. Innovative and truly different. In a current marketplace arena now where almost all of those smartphones are looking and acting the same. The Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 certainly stands out and it's a lot of fun to use, it really is. I certainly, you know, review a lot of smartphones in my time but I always have a smile when I'm using this because it is really a fun device to use. Now, the money wise, yes, I guess if you have that money to burn to try out new tech, you're willing to do that to not only get your hands on the latest and greatest but also support that innovation that Samsung are doing then yes I do think the value or the asking price certainly fits the product. And that there is a wrap. Let me know your thoughts not only on the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 but also about folding smartphones in general in the comment section down below plus if you're new around here be sure to smash that subscribe button, hit like to see more video content like this plus I've got some exclusives coming up this week so do stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next video here on MQAN Reviews. Peace and blessings.